Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of July 21st. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting digitally across from me this week. Hey, Watkins Juniors, how are you? What is up? How's it going? I'm doing pretty great. Dude, I'm, I feel great today. I had a nice day. I, had, I woke up, sun shining. I'm like, you know what? Let's walk the dog. I prepped this dog for like three hours. I'm like, this is a great day. And then I have you to do a podcast with, so this sounds fucking awesome, to be honest. Oh, yeah. It's going to be lit. Always a good combo when the folks are in here. Now, I, I, start a com- I start this episode with a question, but before I do that, let's get a rapid fire. Players who own the PS4 version of Stone Fire Pro won't be able to upgrade to the PS5 version, and will have to buy it again. Atlas said, fuck you, pretty much. Uh, shocking yeah. that they didn't just be like, hey, 20 bucks, and you'll upgrade it or something. No, nah, they're just like... Buy it again. <laughs> You're talking about the same company that could have made Persona 5 Royal a DLC, and they could have done that for Persona 4 Golden. They could have done that for Persona 3, whatever the second edition was. This is their motto, so it is what it is. I'm just, I'm just picturing the, uh, the gif of uh, I don't remember the actor's name, but like, like he's like, <gasps> and he's got like hundreds of bills like oh. stacked on. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just atlas like oh i'm so sorry oh no you have to buy it again <laughs> live a live uh, i think it's live a live i'm pretty sure reviews are out right now seem to be glowing very excited to play this this was already an instant buy for me but this just got me more excited to play it hmm. square I enix oh, oh please no 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 <laughs> wait you don't want this no. I, I'm I'm indifferent. It's it's not oh, that it looks oh. bad. It's just not for me. It's a JRPG, right? Uh, are you a big yeah. JRPG guy? Um, I'm capable of being a big RPG guy. We talked about Persona. I like Persona Five. What I've played of it so far, but traditionally, nah, I'm not. I'm not a turn-based person. Not Squ- at all. Square Enix is offering an NFT alongside a Cloud Strive statue. The story listing reads, "Quote: This includes a digital certificate of authenticity and a digital version of the statue." End quote. <laughs> Uh, that was pretty hilarious. Uh, they just try to hide it. It's like, it's an NFT. Wow. It's like, whoa, what? You got a statue now with an NFT? I'm into... No, no, no. <laughs> That'd be awesome. You just come out and say, I believe in NFTs. <laughs> I have I 70 Bitcoin. It's, coin. Yeah. <laughs> it's all 80% down because it's crashed. Oh, my, my God. family's homeless. Let's go. <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll talk about NFTs later in the show. Now, shit on them. Uh, then uh let's see sony's partners with spin master spin master a toy making company and sony announced a partnership to make toys based on their playstation's various ips according to spin master they will be making quote an action figure collectible playset plush role play vehicles rc and games and puzzles categories end quote cool so you get a bunch of playstation stuff from spin master hell yeah i want my astrobot plush that's all that's really i'll take an astrobot right anything because that thing is this thing is adorable I'll, I'll put it right behind me I don't know, somewhere it's it's too It'll too full, but I'll put something up. Right, eh, where's where is it? Where is it? Right. Here. You have a lot less patches. Oh no no, no. okay no, no I see what you're yeah yeah no that would be great that'd be great right next to uh Ratchet that's his name. Yep. Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> yeah, Ratchet name. and Clank. I got the, I got the shirt. Yep. Uh, <laughs> one of the most long standing constants has left three four three and Nicholas Bovar aka Sparth has left both three four three and Microsoft. Sparth was a lead concept artist on Halo four and five. And then was made art director for Halo Infinite. His announcement on Twitter reads, quote, All good things come to an end. After close to 14 years on Halo, I've decided to pr- uh, pursue other opportunities outside Microsoft for 343 Industries. It's been a hell of a ride. I loved every minute of it. Wishing the absolute best, 343. You guys are and always be amazing. This continues the continued loss of... This continues the continued... I'm a great writer. Uh, loss of talent from 343 since Halo Infinite shipped... Leaving 343 with less and less veterans as time moves on. This would be a bigger story, honestly, if this isn't always happening to this fucking studio. Um, I'm inter- I'm so sad what's happening with 343. Hopefully they get the stuff together. Uh, I think with Halo Infinite, they showed that something is wrong. We got to figure out what that is. We got to fix it. It's a per- is it a person? Is it the way they make the games? Who knows? But whatever that's go- what's going on over there, we got to figure it out. I think they're still reeling from the fact that Halo Infinite got rebooted a couple times. They yeah, I think so too. That game was. They had a director um, leave mid for a production, which is never good. Yeah, I think, you know, do what you're going to do with Infinite, but I really think they just need to make something that isn't Halo so that pressure's off a little bit. Maybe, maybe it's that's a problem though. They named themselves 343. So it's like, oh, you kind of. I mean, the, the Coalition, are they going to make Gears forever? <laughs> so maybe, you know, 
<laughs> I don't know. I That's don't a good question. Good. Xbox. I think we expect that next, but I think they could make other stuff. As an Xbox fan, I think I can say this. Xbox, not the best at managing studios. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. That is fair. eShop <laughs> for the 3DS and Wii U may be going down very soon. As of, um, as of let's do quick math, August 29th, it will no longer be possible to add funds. And as of March 27th of next year, purchases will no longer be available on the 3DS and Wii U eShops. Now, Nintendo did announce that they plan on leaving the ability to re-download these games for, quote, the foreseeable future, end quote. Now, Wii U, I'll be honest, not too surprising. I think they sold, like, barely 20 million units or something like that. Like, so- something like a... Uh, like, take off a zero. <laughs> yeah, it's like something, like, very sad. So, not surprised. But 3DS, pretty shocked that they're already, like nicks in the way to add funds and purchases i thought that was gonna last a bit longer so i think this yeah. is proof that they're like switch is us now we're switch we make switches and they're all gonna be slightly different switches but they're switches yep exactly i gotta get me a, D- a ds and a copy of tamagotchi life <laughs> it's the only game i want to play on ds and that would be maximum value in 10 years that would be 700 dollars or something yeah. Well, now it might be 70, so I might be in trouble already. We'll find out. <laughs> now, let's get into the actual show. But before I do that, every show I do one singular question to my co-host, and that is, Emmett, what have you been playing? I'm paying. Paying. Wow. I've been paying. <laughs> Let me fucking tell you. Just drop my car payment. Yep. But no, um, I've been playing a handful of things here. Um, I did try out. This is a very quick hit. I'm not going to stay on this for long because I realized I don't need to. Um, played on PlayStation Plus. They updated the extra tier with some new games. Okay. I saw I've this. I've always been morbidly curious about that Jumanji video game. <laughs> the the one based off of the Rock movie. No, no. I think we all know what you're talking yeah. about. I don't think that's why I made that face. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I don't think I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> of what you were talking about yeah i'm baffled at uh the jumanji hey look, no no judgment here uh what made you what made you do that is it just a just you like i want to see how this plays well number one i like those movies i think those movies are a lot of fun yeah they're fun um, definitely but mainly i saw it and it didn't look like like you look at the art style you look at like trailers and stuff for the game it looks like one of those like 3d platformer budget titles that you would get a lot on ps2 and such but then I saw gameplay of it once, and it was a third-person shooter. So I'm like, what the fuck? It I did not like know that. These... Oh, it is a cover-based third-person shooter. It is Gears of War for kids. What? Um, almost down to the controls. <laughs> like, it's it's weird. Um, so I was like, you know what? Let me boot this up, see if it's actually good. Um, it's not good enough for me to play. <laughs> but try I, it. I played the tutorial. It's, it's not garbage, mm. but it's like... It's very simple and very basic in a way that a children's game would be. So yeah. I can't really hold it against it. Okay. But I, I I was really surprised to see, oh, this is an actual third part. You're taking cover. You're literally doing roadie runs over cover and stuff. Oh, my like, God. It, it's crazy, but it's also like I could play any other game. So I played it for like 10 minutes and was like, all right, I'm good. Um, But I've also been playing. I've been honestly just messing around a lot uh, with some cloud streaming stuff. Oh, um, okay. I've because I uh, for actually talk about Prime Day purchases right before the show. Oh, we were, yeah. A, yeah, I bought a new router. Uh, so I can, we, we still have a regular router that came from the ISP provider, but um, I wanted one for my room because my Wi Fi doesn't reach to the bed. And if I ever wanted to watch something in bed, it would be a problem. So got one right next to the bed. Now I have all this range. So now I've been streaming a lot. Been playing a little bit of uh Raji and Ancient Epic through Xbox Game Pass on my phone. Okay. Um, and for those of you who don't know what that game is, it's an indie title. Yeah. Think like East Asian like mythology applied to like the Laura Croft top down game. That's a perfect like, that's, that's a perfect way of playing it. I played this, I believe the demo of this. Oof. Yeah. Three, two years ago now, something like that. Um, I think it was during like a demo fest for xbox or something and i played it and it was really it was really fun yeah it it was really good actually i feel obligated to kind of play this game finally because i did i made a video for it when it was in the steam next fest and then the developer actually found it and shared the video out oh wow i was like oh that's really cool that's one of our most viewed uh steam next fest videos because of that so i'm like 
I should play that game eventually. And so I am finally sitting down to play it. Uh, I'm having a good time with it. I just haven't gotten too deep into it because every time I sit down with it, it's after I get home from work. And I mm. because I'm night shift, it's fucking 3.30 a.m. And you're like, and I'm uh, to start a video game. <laughs> yeah. And I'm and I'm having fun and I'm enjoying it. And there's no latency because the Wi-Fi is so good where I'm at now. So I'm like, oh, this is great. And then within half an hour, I'm asleep. So um yeah I, i'm gonna keep playing that uh i do enjoy it i i haven't even gotten as far as i was in the demo so i still need to put that demo's long down. the demo was surprisingly surprisingly long. Was like long. i was playing and i was like i'm still playing this game this is kind of cool yeah exactly so yeah it's a good time it's a good time and then the main thing or actually i've talked about silver steel i'll, I'll really quickly because on the latest episode of the players club podcast I talk a lot about silver steel because yeah. i just beat the entire game over the last week players club podcast uh, where what is that where can i find that <laughs> i love how you're all inquisitive about it um <laughs> egu.tv that's where you can check that podcast that's the one that i do every week uh this week's a solo episode because uh the homie al uh came down with a little uh covid oh uh, oh oh i'm, I'm yeah. sorry to hear that like, give give yeah. him my well wishes please Oh, yes, yes, yes. He's he apparently he's doing a little bit better now. We're supposed to be recording next week's episode later today. So um, we'll keep it a little brief. So we're not, you know, stretching those lungs to capacity quite yet. Um, but yeah, he, he should be doing better now. But uh, yeah, that's a solo episode. And I talk a lot about Server Steel there. So you can check that out. One thing I do want to talk about here so it can get a little bit more exposure because I think it's worth it. There's this game I've been trying called Tiny and Big Grandpa's Leftovers. OK, I, I stop, stop, stop. <laughs> All right, what, what, so what is that? What is that? I need to know because with a unique title like that, I got to know what this game is. It is a 3D platformer, but it's very physics based. Oh, um, okay. So it's basically, you're, you're, I think you play as tiny and you're looking for big. You're like in this desert environment. Um, but the gimmick of the game is that almost everything is physics based. So you get like this laser that you can like cut objects in half with. And like you can cut anything from like, uh, you can cut like pillars in these temples they have. You can cut a pillar, okay. the pillar falls down, and it becomes a platform for you to like jump on top and get a ledge up. Or you can cut it sideways. If there's like a giant block, you can cut it sideways so that you can get a ramp to go up onto the block. Um, then they give you like a rocket that you can attach to any physics object in the world, and it just boosts it into a direction. So if you're trying to like get something out of the way, you can just attach a rocket to the side and then it just boosts away. You have a grappling hook, so you can't swing with the grappling hook, but it's meant to be like to pull a physics object to you or to pull it into a different direction or something. And then they have one more tool that I'm not remembering. Um, I forget what the other tool is, but there's a lot of cool puzzles in this game where um, there'll be doors and you can just slice the doors in half a bunch of times, kind of like ninja gaiden or not ninja gaiden what's that uh platinum game metal gear rising revengeance that's what yeah i love that game um it's a little bit like that where you just slice a bunch of things up but it's it's a little bit more methodical you're not sitting there going crazy with it but okay. there'll be doors that have secrets behind them and you can chop them up with your thing until the doors disintegrate and then walk through and get the secret um there's a lot of like hidden things in here that you got to be real specific because whenever you cut something you can't heal the cut it's those mm. things are just separated now so there will often be times you can get yourself stuck and have to restart the checkpoint because you'll cut a platform in half and then that platform falls through the hole and falls all the way down and you're like, well, that's it. There was this really cool puzzle at the beginning where there's like a there's like a bunch of collectibles okay. on a pillar, but it's like way high up. And then there's a gap that you're at right there that you need to cross. So you're like, all right, let me use that pillar, cross this gap. When you cut down the pillar, there's a bunch of collectibles on the top. So you have to like cut it in a precise way to where it's not going to shake the collectibles off because <laughs> all the collectibles are physics based too. And so okay. it's like, it sounds kind of great. Right, I have the solution, but it's like, y how finicky do you want to be about it? Do you want to try and get all the collectibles? Um, and plus the music's really good. Like one of the collectibles is actually audio cassette tapes that you put into your radio and it continues to make a bigger playlist as you keep playing the game. Um, and it's, it's just really good. And the art style is really cool too. It has kind of like a how I describe it is like those cursed close ups in Ren and Stimpy or SpongeBob. It's it's yeah. kind of that vibe, but 3D. And it's not quite as gross as some of those close ups, but it's like that type of style. It just looks off. It looks like inside. Not, yeah. not no. inside. No, not okay. inside at all. It has like like a lot of hard outlines and a lot of like like those beards that are just like thick black lines. <laughs> 
if you know what I mean. Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, it's like that type of art style. If you've seen it, then you'll understand what I'm saying. But um, yeah, look it up on Steam. Uh, I believe it is still on sale. When I made the podcast earlier this week, it's, it was on sale for like a dollar fifty. Oh wow! On Steam, uh, and I do think it's fully controller supported, so I'm pretty sure it's Steam Deck compatible. Um, if not, try it. I figure it should work, but. Uh, yeah, Tiny and Big Grandpa's Leftovers. It's only two and a half hours long, so I'm like halfway through it at this point. So I'm going to go back to it at some point. It's a uh, good game. I recently finished Until Dawn. So after the quarry, oh, no. yeah. So after quarry, me and my wife were still kind of, you know, hankering for something that we can play together and also kind of experience the story. And we jumped right into Until Dawn now. You know, I told her like, hey, this is their first game. No, not their first game, but their first kind of game like this. So we can go play that. And we played it and it was a great time. I actually think yeah. it might be better than Quarry, which is crazy to say, uh, just because I think it feels like just more of a complete experience from start to finish. I just I feel a little more fulfilled at the end. Um, it is hard, though. Um, both have plus and minuses, but I had a great time and I had never played it before. before so this was my first time playing it. And I did the thing where I was like, <laughs> was that? You turned to Medea for a second. <laughs> I played it prefer. Okay, all right. Let's not let's not talk about the accent comes in every now and then. The right, accent comes in every now and then, and then sometimes my because it's, it's annoying because like half Puerto Rican, so sometimes I go to roll R's and things, wow. and like it's in English, it sounds almost terrible every every time you do it, just because that's not what we do, and my tongue will get messed up. It's so annoying. But um, I respect the lore. I respect the lore. <laughs> the lore. Fuck, man, you are on fire. <laughs> He's burning the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> until dawn, yeah. So I, I had a great time with that. I, I loved the twists and turns that we took. Um, I was spoiled on what the game was about, but I didn't know how we got there. So it was still fun having that little mystery. Uh, yeah. And um, like I said, I, I played it. Oh, and um, I played it without, uh, you know, like going back or anything. So like it was like one full playthrough of like, you know, let's let's make decisions and stick by them regardless of how bad it is. And I had, a, I had a really good time. It makes me want to go back and be like, all right, I want a perfect playthrough now. I only lost one person, uh, which was I felt kind of kind of good about. Well, I forget his name, but you lost the gentleman who played the Bohemian Rhapsody guy. <laughs> I forget his name. Uh, Is that who you lost? Uh, no. Oh, Rami Malek. No, no, no. Oh, you kept him. Yeah. Damn. All right. Yeah. So you have to do a you have to find a specific collectible for him to live. I didn't even know, yes. but I found it. I was like, because it. It finally broke. It gave me the trophy of figuring out what happened to the twins. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I later found out, I was like, oh, no, you, you know, something happens to him if you don't find that. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, there's a lot yeah. of cool things. But I lost uh, Matt, I believe his name is. Uh, Matt. Well, he has a, one. Yeah, he has a varsity chat and he dates Emily. Yeah. yeah I lost okay. him the first time I think he can die. Because uh, I, try, I tried to can save emily that that's Christ. that's why i i should have been like you know what peace out sorry lady but uh yeah i i i made him much too noble than he probably uh was so i lost him um aside from that not really playing too much else i'm just going to start stray very soon probably today i started the forza horizon hot wheels expansion just dumb fun just just dumb fun that's so that's so fun and they have these uh they're the the story of the game is the history of hot wheels couldn't really care to be honest with you but it is cool fun facts every now and then it tells you why the tracks are orange um it's not an exciting reason but they tell you why um there's other things where it's like uh they tell you a uh, snake or a mongoose these little things that like i'm sure a lot of hot wheels fans are like oh that's cool but um it's it's, it's really cool i i like the little hot wheels cars that i get it's very fun uh, but aside from that, I don't think I'm playing too much else. It's really just been until dawn and then kind of relaxing uh, from gaming because uh, we're about to get in a very busy period. So I've just been kind of doing other things, reading and yeah. things of that nature. So Recharge, definitely. Yeah. That's it. Let's get into a room around it for the week. Ooh. Well, call it deja vu, but there's leaked footage and accessibility features of The Last of Us Part 1 remake out on the internet. Anyone interested can go seek them out or stay away if you so choose. There are various points of the game leaks, so needless to say, there's plenty of footage out there if you want to see it. Unclear if this is the final build or just a build of the game. Now, this footage has sparked up the bait yet again, as it is to this game, with its visual enhancements making it worth the price or not. Are we going to be swindled by Naughty Dog and PlayStation Emmett? 
And it is unclear where footage originated. There's multiple leaks, I think. I've seen multiple accounts say they leaked it. I saw Nick from Xbox Era say he was sent stuff. So it's unclear if this was just a giant, like, mass send-off or something. But it's it's everywhere. I, I saw a yeah. clip of the opening of the game. There's a, a very interesting part in near the minute, middle of the game that's, that's out there. So, like, you could very clearly see basically what the game's going to look like. Unless, of course... This is an old build, but it seems pretty final from what I saw. I don't know. But uh, Emmett, first off, did you see any of this? And what do you think? Uh, I didn't see any of it. I've heard a lot of talk about it. <clears throat> it's one of those things where, A, I think it's funny where some people are like, if you want to be spoiled, you can go find it. It's like, you're going to be spoiled on a game from 2013. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I even put that too, where it's like, if you want to stay away, but like spoiled, I don't know if you can, I don't know if we can say spoiled exactly exactly it's like this thing's been out there um but in any case yeah i i gotta be real careful because i don't want to be one of those folks where you know you got a lot of people that are shitting on naughty dog right now for this yes. remaster um or i guess remake and you know saying oh it's unnecessary blah 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 and i do agree that i don't think this thing needs to exist i i don't think it shouldn't exist i don't think it needs to uh, the PS4 version works fine. I think it holds up very well. I think gameplay wise, it's still pretty solid. Um, the first Last of Us is still a great game, uh, especially with that PS4 remaster. And it's playable right now. And a lot of people have it for free. And because a lot of people have it for free, I'm imagining that's a big motivator for this remaster. I think this is a good reason for them to be like, oh, this HBO series just came out. What's this game? Oh, I can go back and find this game. Oh, OK. The original one, it's free. So I don't have to pay for it. So I just claim it on PlayStation Plus or something. And then the second one, Last of Us 2, several years old at this point. And with a lot of Sony games, they're full price up front. But within six months or so, they're already going down to 40 to 30. Like they get pretty cheap relatively quickly. Right. So if you keep it that way, then you're only getting what, 20 bucks and maybe a subscription out of people whenever they want to jump on the Last of Us franchise. This way they can get a nice crispy $70 out of these folks and you know get on top of that hype train um but i'm still like i i i don't feel a need to play this i'm probably not going to play it when it comes out not because i'm making some type of stand but just because i don't have a desire to replay the last of us uh perhaps i will play it just so i can have a justification to get a platinum trophy in it because i'm sure this will have a platinum trophy i have all the trophies in the original last of us except for the multiplayer trophies and i don't know how much i want to commit myself to that so perhaps I can finally get a platinum in a Last of Us game through that game. I don't need seventy bucks for that, so I'll come around in a year or two and you know play it around. But I understand why this exists. Sony needs their money or wants their money. <laughs> so I think you put a lot of things very eloquently, um, and you said a lot of things that I agree with. First off, uh, I think people are being a bit dramatic about this. Uh, I understand the trepidation of spending seventy dollars on the game, but like. Don't buy it then. That's that's just my point then. That that's how you have to tell them. Don't don't buy it. But we don't do that here. We buy it anyways. We just bitch about it. Uh, but uh, I was right there with you with like, sh do I think they should have done this? No, I would have preferred something else. I would have preferred. I, I'll be honest. I don't even know what it. Honestly, probably a new game over this. But I, yeah. I understand that they wanted. Apparently, I think this is multiple reasons why this was made. One, apparently it was originally going to be remade by someone else, and Nine Dog said no. They were like, we're going to remake this then. No one else touches our games. And then two, they want something out for HBO Max's show when it comes out. They want a they want the entry level person that goes to buy a PS5 because they like The Last of Us or something to be able to be a, oh, this is the game based off of it. And then they, they go and buy it. And this will be ready, just like I'm sure uh God of War Ragnarok kind of plans. They they plan this whole like interwoven tv movie thing with their games now so they want these games fresh for when they get stuff i'm actually surprised they didn't do more with uncharted about the movie that came out they only really did that collection and i was kind of surprised i was like wow i was expecting a big extravaganza here's all the things remaster blah 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 but um clearly well, this is I, I was gonna say real quick the team that started development on this last on this last of us remake they were originally doing uh, Uncharted 1. Uncharted right? 1, yeah. yeah. So and they then, originally were saying yeah. Uncharted 1, and uh, uh, and then they were, they, I think they were going to give it to Bend, and then they said no because they were afraid to get dissolved. 
uh into naughty yeah. dog or something i remember that story that 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 got really complicated very quickly but um uh back to the uh original point i was trying to make um when yeah. when they go to release this game I, again i understand what people are like yeah 70 dollars for a remaster you know and they kind of do the quotes where it's like it kind of doesn't look that great but at the end of the day i feel like we're we're kind of going with the nike route here you know the nike swoosh that means a lot the little paw print that says naughty dog i think it means a lot just because it's naughty dog i think i think they're like hey we're paying you're gonna pay premium because it's you know you still get in naughty dog experience we're gonna get the money. Play like you said. PlayStation wants the money. They're not gonna be like, oh, thirty dollars. Like no, if they they think you're gonna buy it, they're gonna make it seventy bucks. Nintendo re-released their games and made it more expensive from the Wii U. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, I think, was fifty bucks on the Wii U, and they charged yeah. you more when they re-released it. So like, you know, this is not like this is unseen here uh, in the space. Um, I personally am excited to replay it, but I have only played it once, so. I'm a bit excited and also for the same reasons as you, I'm a little bit of a trophy guy. So like, I kind of want to get the platinum cause I know the multiplayer is not going to be in there. Uh, so playing the game again, I'm like, yeah, I could get a platinum for last of us. Cause I'm not playing that online for the other one. So, uh, but, uh, just final thoughts. I think people are being a bit dramatic. And again, if, if you don't think it should exist, make sure, please just don't buy it. Do not don't buy it. That's how you have to show Sony that, that, that you disagree with them remaking the game. Yeah. Plus it's going to be, 40 bucks by the end of the it well, will be 40 bucks within probably three months i think is easy yeah, to say honestly like completely like Friday, you're getting a discount on that yeah fat discount probably because it's a single player game especially without it having multiplayer like it's mm. it's gonna be like 40 dollars. i think i saw the quarry was 40 dollars on xbox's yeah. big sale and i was like it's been like four weeks i think or something like that so like mm -hmm. Yeah, just wait. <laughs> Have some exactly. patience. Like, yeah, Sony. Sony isn't Nintendo. Nintendo will keep that shit the same price yep. for two years before a discount. Like Sony, they drop prices quickly, so don't worry about it. You'll just miss out on initial conversation. But you had this conversation twenty. We had, we had it, we had it already. So don't, no one worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Sonic Frontiers release date on Steam DB was updated December third, twenty twenty two, before being changed to holiday twenty twenty two. Originally, it was just November eighth, according to the same site a few days ago. So this thing is moving around a lot. I, I wish they would have kept November eighth. Just be like, no, yeah, choose no. between us or God of War. <laughs> would have been a, it just would have been funny. But uh, uh, I can't. I we talked about this before, so we don't have to rehash this. But like Sonic Frontiers, I just can't care like enough about it but i am happy for the fans of the game yeah it, it's one of those games where i'm like that could be fun but in the way like it, it reminds me of like a bio mutant where i look at it and i'm like oh this is clearly very very janky but it yeah. looks like it may be doing something cool so maybe i'll play it but i shouldn't feel that way about a sega published mega ip like sonic you should <laughs> not be saying that about a sonic game and also I still will never forget that fans were begging them to delay the game. I just I don't oh, think yeah. we've ever seen that before with the where the fans were like, please don't release it. Like that's 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 pretty good. I'll I'll remember apparently that for a while. It, apparently. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh yeah, November, yeah. December. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So clearly. Exactly. This is just a fun one. According to Jason Shry on a thread on recent era, a, a side I'm way too afraid of to to go look at pertaining to god of war ragnarok's release date possibly being starfield's original release date quote i heard after the announcement that it was indeed planned for november 11th 2022 and that sudden release change to november 9th 2022 was why they bumped back the announcement from june 30th to the week after not 100 percent sure why they moved it i think it was more of a logistical thing rather than anything to do with starfield end quote uh this is not too much to talk about this is actually something that i had theorized like maybe something happened that like at the very last minute that they had to push it a week because it was almost a week and then there was that small trailer that wasn't that much and then they debuted the collector's edition so i think this is just further proof that's like yeah it wasn't necessary because of anything it's just something kind of happened yeah hmm. okay well nice to know <laughs> good tidbit sony has fixed the final fantasy remake integrated ps plus issue that uh was ongoing for a couple days there is an issue trying to get a ps5 upgrade when you owned the remake on ps4 uh, so this was a uh, apparently a quick fix. I only think it lasted like three days. But if you had the PS4 version, you couldn't get the plus upgrade. So you can go do that now. Enjoy. Yeah, I don't know what it is about PlayStation. Their digital licenses that are all screwy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I filter. 
I think it's just proof that they're still using kind of just outdated ways of things. I'm sure uh, the stuff they have now kind of like works a lot better, but like they have to deal with how this was made prior, so it just complicates things. Yeah. You're still on Windows 98. Something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they might be on 2000 by now. They might be on 2000. <laughs> they might be on XP. PlayStation <laughs> discon- uh, just a quick one. PlayStation discontinues one-on-one support on Twitter on August 1st. Uh, I can't imagine that was good. Uh, so <laughs> I'm shocked Dude, it was going. I-, I can't tell you how many times you get a tweet where you're just complaining about a PlayStation thing and they're like, hey, we can help you here. And it's like, all right, buddy. <laughs> hey, relax. I'll talk to you. Relax, everyone. Yeah. I remember I was like asking like PC questions and I got Twitter accounts messaging me like, would you like us to make a build for you? I'm like, just leave me alone. And don't don't be doing this. Beware, Xenoblade fans, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is out in the wild early and people are already uploading footage and spoilers on the internet. Be wary. I'm not a fan of this game, but um, uh, uh, I know a lot of people that listen to the show are. So be cautious. Uh, apparently, you know, as it happens, people have gotten their hands on it early, probably through smaller sh- uh, shops or something, selling them early. Be careful. For sure, for sure. Via Video Games Chronicle, this is a bit of a long one. Build a Rocket Boy, the studio founded in 2016 by former Rockstar North president Leslie Benzies, has announced that Major Talent is joining the executive team in three hires. Mike Hawking as chief development officer, Murray... Mu- Sorry. That's a name. Yeah, that is, isn't it? Miri <laughs> Pennell as senior vice president of global marketing and Randall Price as chief publishing officer. Hawking was a co-founder of Evolution from way back when. I wonder how many people remember that. When among many other things... Panel uh, from 2K uh, was their VP of publishing from Europe. Price was senior vice president of global business of for Area Net, the Guild Wars developer. The studio is currently working on Everywhere, which is described as, quote, open world triple A game with a multiplayer experience incorporating a multi chapter epic narrative, user generated content through a virtual sandbox where players can create their own worlds and deepen deep social and streaming integrations end quote that was a mouthful uh i don't know if you heard about this this is getting quite a bit of buzz with like a bunch of pc people it looks like it is like a cracked out like dreams almost or something uh i think it's still kind of early for us to hear too too much about it but it seems kind of cool it seems like if it was it seems like dreams if it was made by a corporate entity yeah <laughs> which is this, which is to say that like media molecule is a corporate entity too like let's not get it twisted but of course of course like so many buzzwords and did you just see what i fucking said i didn't even yeah, sound like a person <laughs> for half of that i just sounded like an ai generated <laughs> being open Jesus world trip away game with multiplayer experience incorporating a, like oh my god jesus talk like a person <laughs> it's fucking yeah, what, is, what is this what is this I actually went to their site and I'm like, yo, there's no pictures or nothing. nothing. This just seems like it's giving me APB vibes. Whoa. Fucking A, not, dude. Yeah, I know APB is a deep cut. but Deep like, cut. Yeah. I love it, though. And it's another one where someone left the GTA team to go work on that. Yep. And now it's supposed to be the next, bis- the next big thing. And, it was and then PCs. And then pff, exactly. So, it was like that not uh, Sleeping Dogs mm-hmm. MMO. Remember that? Kind of a similar oh, situation yeah. that where like Try everyone Wars. they tried so hard and then we were like, mm-hmm. oh, this isn't going to be good. And they were like, yeah. no, we got this. Oh, you know, you sleeping go. dogs. Yeah. Every time I play sleeping dogs, I'm like, God, I wish this was an MMO. <laughs> <laughs> fucking no one said that. Oh, boy. They, they just needed some type of monetary pipeline. Of course. Uh, God, God bless them. But yeah, I'm not saying everywhere is going to be a dog shit game, but like it seems like it is being created to be content and not yes. to be art and yeah. i think when you start from that standpoint with a video game that is commonly where mediocrity gets in so, yeah and i brought up dreams for a reason because like you know dreams is i think really cool but like it just never went anywhere and i feel like we might have a similar situation with this where you have 70 buzzwords and then it's like comes out and everyone goes oh this is cool What's coming out uh, after this? <laughs> like, I feel like that's kind of the, the groove that we might be looking at. This might be huge, but I frankly doubt it. Eh, I'll, I'll say that because Dreams does have a community. There is a fan base. They're still doing stuff often. It's just that the community is small because it was always going to be small. You get a, any, any console exclusive game that, gener- that is built off of user generated content. The pool of players is going to be pretty small. That's just how it is until it comes to PC or PS5. Right. So everywhere... 
I can imagine it having some type of a fan base, but if it has a small fan base, this thing seems too big to only survive off of a couple thousand people. So we'll see. We'll have to see. Triple A game with multiplayer. Blah, blah, blah. Boy. I'll start the actual show for the week. (laughs) Who would I be if Saints Row was in the news cycle and I didn't cover it on the show when I have Emmett Watkins Jr. with me? We have a few things to go over here. Let's start with a quick one. Saints Row, as of July 20th, has gone gold ahead of its August 23rd launch. So there's a fresh 1.0 in the hands of the devs right now. We have a hands-on preview as well with Push Square, written by Liam Croft. Please go give them a click, because I will only be reading very small tidbits. So please give them a click and read through it. It was a very very nice preview. Quote, the very first mention confirms it. Saints Row is not interested in taking itself seriously. As an army of soldiers fights its way through a movie set dressed up like cowboy, ca- sorry, ugh, cowboys in Indians era, where protagonist jokes about their wages rather than issuing orders, cutscenes are over the top, set pieces dotted throughout combat, hanging off the side of a jet, you'll blow the brains off of bad guys on the ground before dealing with the pilot, um, end quote. Back to me, this is uh, Liam saying, uh, Liam goes on to say, that a smartphone is going to be like your main menu. So it's going to access things like uh, upgrading, uh, go, doing challenges, unlocking skills, etc. Uh, and then let's get back to the story. Quote, racking up headshots and triple kills or driving on the wrong side of the road. You're constantly earning XP. End quote. Mm. Let's get into yeah. some negatives. And also, Emmett, stop me if you ever want to cover any of this. Let's get into uh, some, so far it's good. Let's get into some negatives. Quote, it's the open world itself where Saints Row continues to feel lacking, however. This reboot feels like Open World 101. Icons quickly fill up the map. Some will be shops to source outfits and guns from, while others will be side activities rewarding further bonus experience and opportunities to increase your bank balance. Rather than feeling like a living, breathing place, it's an environment designed around you. Nothing really happens in trips to and from missions unless you make it so. And all you can really do is go on a murdering spree outside of an aforementioned activities. And even then, the police force is far too easy to get away from. End quote. I'll I'll say this a lot of the there's two ways to make an open world you can make a living breathing world like he's talking about or you can make a playground slash sandbox correct Saints Row has always been more of a sandbox they correct. give you especially after Saints Row 3 going forward they give you a bunch of tools to get around that sandbox to do stuff in that sandbox I am not necessary I don't need to all the NPCs to have like lives that they live externally from the player i don't need all that because really welcome by and hear some person going oh my god my wife i'm getting a divorce and you're like oh the story is so deep (laughs) (laughs) exactly like i don't need that from a saints row game so while i understand that to be a critique some people would have considering other games you know your breath of the wilds you he's clearly referencing red dead 2 right red dead 2 is a i think i think it's i think it's clear i i I actually kept everything he said there because i didn't want to you know, take him out of context or anything. I think it's clear that he's he's saying Red Dead Two, right? He's he's kind of com- sure. like, hey, you know, in Red Dead Two, I, I was like, the world was happening around me, like I, I you know, there were like yeah. eagles eating squirrels and shit, and like it could be a robbery, like it just a bunch of stuff was happening around to him rather than he being the center of attention. I I I agree with that, and I've talked about it before. Red Dead Two, one of my favorite games of all time, but I don't need that from like a game about you know silly crime antics like mm. i i'm cool with being the center of attention because i am <laughs> that's just what the game is we aren't done yet over on video games chronicle we'll be talking about them a lot this show we have an interview by jordan midler with damian allen principal designer of the game again go give them a read i'm not covering anything not even close but here's two questions i wanted to highlight this is jordan midler rebooting a beloved series is always difficult But what have you made of the reaction of the general gaming public and the fans of Saints Row? This, of course, Damien Allen answering. It's funny. We've been working on this project for quite some time. You don't come up with the entirety of the project early on and say, hey, this is what we're going to make. You have a goal. You have a direction. You have an idea. It becomes somewhat organic. You have a box you're working. You always have a box you're working on, an idea to go for. We We had so many discussions on does this feel like Saints Row? What makes us a Saints Row project? What makes this a Saints Row game at its core by looking at the previous projects and looking at what we have and having played through the new game myself in its entirety, I feel it's very true to assess your game. So it's such a tough position sometimes because you just want to say, trust us. We love this franchise. We love this game as much as you do. Would you like to expound on that? Uh, Yeah, I I like that answer because here's the thing. I've seen a lot of people be 
upset, sad, whatever about this new reboot that are really big core Saints Row fans. Yeah, and I feel um, like I, I was one of those people, yeah. Yeah, and part of me understands it a little bit because, hey, where, where are all the characters that I know and love? Where's Pierce? Where's Shondi? Where's Gat? Um, all those guys. Where's Zemos for me? I like Zemos a lot. Zemos was cool. Was crazy. Wasn't he? Um, um, he was the vocoder dude. Thank you. Thank you. I, God, the money won't come quick, but you bet it'll come. Uh, I love that fucking line. Fuck yeah. I know Zemos lines like the back of my hand. Um, but yeah, I understand why people are having reservations because that whole cast is completely gone. Yet here's this new group that you're slapping the same name on. Yeah. Um, so I understand that issue. A little weird. I feel like a lot of exactly i think a lot of people got really something about it didn't sit right with me when there was a whole like twitter outrage campaign when the first trailer had the boss as a black woman and it was like oh no i can't change him anymore and i'm like what makes you think you can't customize the character anymore just because it's a di just because they customized them before you saw him in the trailer <laughs> like i i don't know that really like put a bad taste in my mouth yeah but this was I, in reference to like them being like oh i i should be a specific person now or something yeah like i think people are like i oh, faintly now remember I'm an this actual player character yeah. but like i feel like people only thought that because it it wasn't a template white guy again because if it was a template white guy they'd be like oh i can change that we'll, so, we'll talk we'll talk about that a lot uh early in the uh, next show too yeah uh yeah very common right so yeah. having having generic yeah. male one like yeah that would probably have easier around and people are like oh my god it's different so yeah exactly. yeah it, it should be different yeah they they fear they're locked into it rather than just thinking oh this is the franchise that i know and love i can change it anyway right um but yeah besides that i feel like people have definitely come around once they showed a lot of the customization stuff and how crazy you can get with not just character customization but cars vehicles clothing all that stuff like you can really go insane with this game so i think a lot of people are like okay this is going to be more the Saints where I love. And to me, the thing that I'm excited about is, yes, I, I want to play another Saints Row. I'm excited for this thing. I literally, we were talking about cloud gaming and whatnot. I played a little bit of Saints Row 4 on Stadia just to test out this Wi-Fi. Yes, I played Stadia. You heard me, right? Um, but Don't add them. Uh, <laughs> well, feel free to add me if it's feel possible. Feel free. Actually, feel free to add them. <laughs> exactly. Um, the thing that I'm excited about is that they are taking a lot of the better ideas from Agents of Mayhem a game that barely anybody played <laughs> but ten. uh it was like a yeah exactly i mean i understand why 10 people and yeah. i'm one of the 10 <laughs> um saints row spinoff you, you don't need to look it up but uh there were some decent ideas in there the ideas of uh you know them using the super moves and you're building up a super meter the entire time that's in this new saints row i think that's a really good idea for kind of making a longer gameplay loop because you know I forget what it is, the the Halo game design trope of like, they got to make it fun every 10 seconds. So they give you a 10 second loop to repeat. That's fun every time. It feels like Saints Row is trying to stretch out that 10 seconds to like a solid minute or two to make that loop engaging every single time and then just keep going from there. Uh, so I'm excited to see if they nail it from not just this preview, but I also saw Blessings talk about it. I saw uh, over at Kind of Funny Blessing uh, and I saw the IGN uh, preview of it too. So. It looks good. It looks solid. I believe in them. I know they, they love this project just as much as I do. So I trust them. I just hope the other fans do and aren't just like, ah, oh, I can't do a gangsta walk and shoot my gun sideways anymore. This game's ruined. And it's like, all right, buddy, go play 25 to life if you really need that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. I hope I hope in a more elegant way said something to that effect to where I was like, I kind of want to feel like a gang member. Um, I, I want to feel like a criminal or something like I want to feel like I own like this business or something. I don't even know what that looks like, if I'm being honest. So I don't I don't even know. I think people, what I was really criticizing kinda, to begin with, I was just like, yeah. this just doesn't feel like Saints. This feels like a blending of like four get out of hell and then like kind of three sort of but i'm i am starting to get a little more interested in the game as time goes on because the more they are showing the more it does look good i just hope we eventually get gameplay because like i just feel like i keep seeing what well, is this how much you could customize the character i'm like that's cool can i fucking see like what the game looks oh, like there's a lot you watch some of the video previews it's a lot of gameplay just yeah, no up. so yeah to, the, to be fair i have not seen any of this stuff so i am a bit behind so i i agree that is now probably an old issue. I can probably now go see as much as I want about the game. Certainly, certainly. 
One more. And I want your, I definitely want your opinion on this. Jordan Midley okay. asks, how did the team deal with the changing sensibility in terms of content and jokes? There's obviously some elements of previous Saints Row games that couldn't be in the modern entry. So how did the team ensure they weren't punching down? Damian Allen answers, the idea of punching down is something we wanted to avoid whether possible. We want the players to feel like they could be the type of boss they want to be. The boss is definitely a criminal, so they're going to make choices that, you know, they, as the player, engages in the game. They are not exactly someone you would say, hey, this is the best person to have around and not at, I think he means at a non-criminal moment, but it is read as and. I think that's a typo. All the developers uh, here understand the world that we live in now. We want to make sure that we embrace the ideas that games are for everyone. We really want players to say, this is my game. This is my world. I'm engaging in how I want to. We have a story to tell you. You know, the story is definitely a singular story, but it's not about making fun of people at their expense. It's about this group of people that uh, that are struggling and how they uh, rise to the top of the criminal world. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that idea. I like that concept. I I'll say for a lot of the original Saints Row games, it's less that they felt like they were ever punching down and more like they felt like a parody of hip hop culture from a perspective that I am not entirely sure is a good perspective uh, to have that that it even exists from. probably like yeah. it was very yeah. it was a very strange parody but it did work sometimes it, it, okay. it was trying to nail this kind of anti-established thing but it never really got there like they were See, trying to go ahead yeah oh i was gonna say that anti-establishment thing is where i think this saints row is directly going for because you know they're talking about oh yeah all the characters are millennials now and such yeah and yeah they'll make jokes about going to brunch and whatever but I am also seeing a lot of like jokes about like, like I saw this one preview where you start as a mercenary and instead of like commanding the other mercenaries to like do work, you're like talking shit about the low pay that they all get. Yeah. And like, it's a lot of jokes about like, oh, we're all oppressed <laughs> because we're all the system is bearing down on all of our backs. So it's a lot of that type of humor. That's the type of, sh that's literally my type of humor. Yeah. So I'm all for that. Um, And I'm glad they're for as much as people bemoan the fact that, you know, you can't hold your gun sideways anymore, whatever. I think this is overall a better way to go because a that lot of that too. stuff is, it, it's, it's not racist, but it's definitely racially charged. It's in yeah. Some of the I, old games. Yeah. There, there was something when I was originally critiquing the game, I was like, am I looking at this in the right way? Uh, or am I somehow being insensitive? Cause I was saying almost like I want the gang culture in there, but at the same time, it's like, eh, it's kind of, kind of weird to say that. And then I remember saints Row two being very, trying to be very like gritty gritty but like harsh. yeah it was definitely more harsh so maybe that i was really trying to convey that but i definitely yeah. get what you mean it did it does feel like when you are arguing that that it can get mixed up that you're like almost being like i want to be this kind of in between of like let me be a black guy and like rob people like that's definitely yeah. not what you're trying to say yeah. but i think sometimes when i when you try to convey something like that it, it can be come across that way yeah, I mean, it's an interesting balance. You got to balance because you can definitely do like the typical like gangster shit yeah. and be funny, but you can't be funny in the way that Saints Row is funny. Right. You can't be silly, ridiculous with it. Like, don't be a medicine self central while drinking your juice in the hood. If you know what that movie mm. is, good for you. Um, basically, it's scary movie, but for all the gangster movies that came out in the 90s. So like Juice, Menace to Society, you know, Boys in the Hood, all those movies, but the parody of it. The, the scary movie version of those movies that's what drinking your juice in the hood was um saints row one and two definitely felt like it was the game version of that parody movie right. um and ever since three going forward it seems like it's less of a parody of that and more so just like a fun ridiculous action comedy it more traditional like actual the scary movie franchise rather than like a parody of those old gangster movies and now with this new one it definitely seems like they're still going in that direction and you can still be a criminal, just not necessarily a gangster. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's going to be healthier for the franchise, get it a wider fan base. And plus, a lot of that gangster imagery that I'm sure people are missing is rooted in the early 2000s. <laughs> like, it is. that would be so out of place here. And and yeah, it would probably feel weird, too, because it's just like yeah. it's that, that was such a 2000s kind of thing. So, like, put just putting it now out of context, it's like what the fuck when was this made it's like so exactly. i, I want to quickly get um your opinion on um because I, I feel this is this said a lot 
Do you really think that there's something in this game that, like, especially in the original Saints Row, that just couldn't be done now? I don't, frankly, remember anything being too vermuse or gross or anything overly racist or something. So, I, and I always, yeah. I hate the term when people are like, well, you, you can't do that today. And I feel like you definitely can. You just have to know what you're doing when you're approaching topics you can't you gotta tip wave you, you, yeah and you well you can't wave it around like a fucking idiot you gotta put it very yeah. eloquently you can't just be like mm -hmm. he's it's funny he's transgender yeah well, it's like oh well that's not really funny i understand maybe yeah. it used to be but it's not really funny like he's yeah it's kind of normal now yeah, yeah yeah so um, is, is what do you even think of that because I, again i i kind of cringe whenever it's like Oh, you can't do that today. Like, you definitely can. There's definitely people that do yeah. it, and they make billions of dollars. Work. So, don't. That's true. I don't agree. I mean, it depends. For as someone who played the original Saints Row somewhat recently, like a couple months ago, there are not even a lot. I'd say you like a handful of jokes, no more than like five of just like throwaway jokes that like, oh, you really couldn't do that today like just like i remember a, a, a good bit of gay that. ones yeah there were some gay jokes in there yeah. like some of the escort missions yep. where you the, the missions where you have to pick up a couple and they'd have sex in the back while you drive away from the police cameras like there's some dialogue there that's like okay that's a little icky not like oh my fucking god but like all right maybe not um so that type of stuff you'd have to chill with some of the stuff that johnny, johnny gat would say is a little crazy sometimes racially insensitive stuff about like asians but he's asian so i'm like maybe that's fine i'm but sure at the same it is time, yeah i'm sure i'm sure that's fine but at the same time he'll say some psychopathic shit that's like how do you have a girlfriend hey, dude, <laughs> i remember saints row 2 being just like at a flip of a dime it could just change the tone and you're like whoa bro <laughs> you're yeah. a fucking crazy person and you yeah. and that immersion kind of breaks and you're like oh my god i'm i'm definitely fucked up like this is not good none of this is good and you're yeah. not supposed to i'm just saying like it, it definitely is quick to be like oof the fuck am yeah. i playing certainly and i'm sure that type of stuff is what they probably want to avoid that's probably why yeah. they kept the more lighthearted tone of a saints row 3 because if you want to make a serious if you want to have any moment of serious crime gangsta shit you have to commit to it the entire time instead of just being able to switch tones like that um because i'm pretty sure no disrespect to volition they are not machine games oh. i don't know if they got the writing like that yeah to i don't swap back and forth yeah i don't think so either I, I i agree again no no offense to them but that that takes serious chops i don't know if you're up for it but i guess we'll see when this comes out mm -hmm. but yeah uh, i guess final points like i am excited for the game i want to play this i i need i need like to play this game when it comes out because like i criticized it at the beginning and i've gotten like smoother on it as it's getting closer so I just at this point, I I, I really want to get my hands on it. Yeah, I've accidentally pre-ordered it twice, so I'm here for it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. I still don't know if I can cancel one of these because if I get a two hundred dollar charge that day, I'm gonna cry. But <laughs> eh, I'll just return it. You you got you got this. You'll figure it out. Exactly. Sticking with VGC again, Jordan Midler. Shout out to you, man. You you're doing great work over there. With a fantastic interview with House Marks narrative designer Evie Korhanen. Pretty sure I got that right. Uh, she previously worked on Control, by the way. Fun fact. Ooh, Great yeah. interview, and we won't even scratch the surface of this thing because it is huge. But I did want to highlight a few things. So this is uh, her speaking about uh, the how the narrative theme of the girl was so much since Returnal. Quote, we didn't quite know what Returnal was going to be when we started building it. Now that we have figured it out and that formula works so well, we're looking at what's next. Now that we've been bought by Sony, we have a runway to go even wilder. All that financial backing and stability, end quote. That's what I want to hear. That is what I want to hear. That is like the positive acquisitions I shit on them all the time. But that is a positive where it's like, hey, we got a lot of money. That helps us get crazy because we can take a hit if we need to. And Housemark was definitely on the verge of maybe closing down. We don't know. But they were doing that weird thing where like, well, we have to make a battle royale because no one's buying our arcade shooters anymore. And then they were like, well, no, PlayStation funded our eternal game so we should be good but i'm very very happy to uh to hear that yeah same i am too I, i've been rooting for house mark i don't love every single one of their games but i pick and choose i like a lot of their stuff they deserve to stick around and i'm glad they will um i still need to play returnal returnal is one of those games where like on paper i should love that game i just haven't gotten around to it for whatever reason so yeah i'm sure i'm gonna love whatever they create next as well yep 
and this is talking about the narrative, this kind of narrative and mystery that's heavily reliant on plagiar agency isn't new to the narrative designer. She previously used to work on Control, like we talked about earlier, another sci-fi horror shooter with a female protagonist. We wondered being that so much narrative uh, DNA seems to be shared between the games. If she felt this is central to the way she likes to tell stories in the games, quote, I had this idea that Housemark and Remedy are essentially going for the same thing in different directions. Housemark is known for its gameplay, and Remedy is known for its storytelling. But with Control and Returnal, they are starting to edge together, so I think it's natural that they feel similar. They both give the player a lot of agency, and there's a lot of optional storytelling and world building on the side. I'm very keen on continuing that, and I feel like it gives the player choice, and it doesn't feel forced. You never look looking for gameplay and then feel like you're forced to do the story. It means the optional story bits become more rewarding because the player has to engage with them. Control and Returnal also both feature female lead uh, characters, still somewhat uncommon in the AAA space, although less so in the era of the Horizon series and The Last of Us, but we are curious what this means to her, and this is of course referencing to the narrative. Quote, It's not a 100% must for me to work on a game with a female lead, but it does make me engage with the story more. I think there's more storytelling we haven't seen from the female perspective. I'm not opposed to male-led stories. It's just we've seen many of those perspectives. We've seen the brown hair white man goes and saves the world. You could explore neurodivergent disabled men. It would just it would just be a different perspective to it. Lots of things I like here. First off, I love the way she puts it. I had this idea that Housemark and Remedy are essentially going for the same things in different directions. Housemark gameplay, Remedy storytelling. And I love that she goes, they both give energy, but I'm never keen on continuing that. I feel like it gives the player a choice and it doesn't feel forced. You're never looking for gameplay and then feel like you're forced to do the story. I love the way she puts that. And that is such, that is like a perfect way of saying why Returnal does what it does so well. The gameplay is so solid. And then the story is there to kind of like piece together everything and give you breadcrumbs and like you're super into it. And I just love the way she puts that. That's why I want to highlight this interview. Please go read this. This is like one tenth of that interview. It's huge. I loved. I loved reading all of it. Anything you want to piece out from that? Uh, not too much. The the most that she, the most that I'm really taking away from this is like, damn, I loved Control. So what the fuck am I doing not playing Returnal? Yeah, dude, you're <laughs> fucking up, man. You're really fucking up, dude. Returnal was really good. It was really good. Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah that that's just something it's it's on my list i have it i actually fucked up and bought it on psn and then they put it on playstation plus extra anyway yep. so i'm like i can't even return a disc yeah damn it um but hey I, i'm still gonna get around to it i definitely want to play it and uh yeah can't wait to do so finally yeah and um uh just a, a quick thing i'll leave you all with very very hopefully we see more of this and i think like he says we are horizon and last of us but female leads different leads again not the same thing at all the time. Very hyped for that. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm excited for that. I, I. I just want more games with different characters because I. Me too. I've saved a million worlds as a million white men. I. I'm totally good with playing anything and else. And um, also, I, I. I hate that when I think of what is a great black led game, and I still say Walking Dead season one. I have to go that far, cool. Emmett. <laughs> like what the what the fuck. I, I I mean, there's a handful I could add on there. You know, your Mafia threes, your that's true. I, that is very I would, true. I would go back further and say, while this isn't like a incredible game, I like this character a lot. Emmett Graves is really cool. Uh, not because I share the name uh, from Starhawk. Um, but, I didn't play that, so I can't uh, I can't uh, attest to that. That's fair. I just thought he was a cool, just like great character design in the actual story. He's fine, but like. That so whoever drew that was in their fucking bag because just the <laughs> fucking emulsion coming up the skin that's just fucking awesome. But yeah, that that's definitely gonna change a lot. We got I think so. like uh, El Paso elsewhere as a black protagonist. Uh, she dreams elsewhere also has that vibe to it. That's being ma made by a, a, a I think black game director. So it's a lot of stuff in there. Like we're our community's getting a lot more games with you know not just black protagonists, but you got a lot more women making games with female protagonists as well. At a certain point, especially with like female protagonist games, like that is going to be so commonplace very, very soon. Cause like, like we're already getting there, right? Like, yeah, it's unavoidable. Yeah. It's unavoidable. Horizon last of us. Now we have control and we had like that. That is a great thing, but I am saying like, let's get, let's get some different ethnicity. You know, let's get an, Definitely. let's get Indian. Let's get native American. Let's get, yeah, and let's not get Asian, and not yet. <laughs> I, I fucking completely forgot about that. 
I completely yeah. forgot about the game. Oh my god, I remember playing that. I think that was like the second 360 game I ever got or something like that. And it's all I had to play, and I was like, God, this is bad, but I gotta play it. <laughs> I don't got anything else. Rock 1 and 2 on PS4, that's why I have it on the brain, but yeah. I'd love to see a lot more, you know, different ethnicities. I mean, uh, Infamous Second Son had a pretty good Native American character, even if it wasn't played by a Native American actor. Pro Baker's like, I, I can... I can act. <laughs> I'll be uh, I'll be Native American. Exactly. But yeah, there's a lot of work to do, but I, I can very clearly see that work being done. So I'm I'm content for now. We just got to see the fruits of that labor pay off. It's like when Laura Bailey played uh, uh, Uncharted uh, 4. Uh, uh, Maylene? 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 Yeah. I was like, uh, fuck, what? <laughs> yeah. And I love that whatever. character. Too. I love her. I love her too, which is, which is wild. And, and no one really... No one really cared, which I was surprised about. I, I didn't care, to be, if I'm being honest, because the they explained it. She didn't start off as black, but she changed midway through. And then she was like, well, I don't want to I don't want to leave because like, I don't, she was put in an interesting spot. And I was like, ah, I don't necessarily blame you, I guess. And also, she probably was like, I'm getting paid a shit ton of money. I don't want to leave. <laughs> true, true. Get that bag. I don't blame you. I'm a bit confused now, and I know that's relatively common here on the show, but listen to this. Discord, the go-to voice and text chat service on the internet, is being added to Xbox. Now, that by itself isn't crazy news, but last year, PlayStation actually partnered with Discord to do this exact thing, to integrate Discord to PlayStation. Not only did they partner with Sony, but they also invested in Discord's investment rounds at the time and became a minority stakeholder. That aside, let's get, let's get back to what Xbox fans want to hear. After linking, and this is from Xbox Wire, the, the, this is uh, official. Uh, how to do it so you have to link your xbox account with discord then this is quote quote you can hop in a channel you'd like to talk in using discord just as you normally would on the discord mobile app you'll see a new option to join on xbox at this point you'll need the xbox app to transfer voice chat from your discord account to your xbox if you haven't installed the xbox app will launch and let you connect to the discord voice chat to your series s and x or xbox one console Select Xbox Insiders can actually preview this feature right now as of recording. You have to be very, very early in the program, but you can. Um, and it will slowly roll out to more people in that program and then expect that feature very soon to everyone else outside of the program because as soon as it hits there, we're talking two to three months before the general public has this. Uh, Emmett, we can take this in a multitude of directions. I want to get back into... PlayStation didn't get it first. That's very interesting. That, and that tells us that the contract that they signed had nothing to do with with third party uh, access. And if yeah. you remember at the time, we had rumors that Microsoft actually tried to do this exact same thing. I'm curious if the reason they didn't sign on Microsoft was because PlayStation was a lot more lax with with what they could do, because I was very surprised that uh, Microsoft, uh, they said no to Microsoft. Uh, and I think there was also to be purchased at the time, too, I want to say. And they said yeah. no to a very, very, very fat stack, if I remember correctly, which is which I uh, is crazy. But we could take this a number of ways. What did you first think of when you saw the story? The first thing I thought was actually when I first saw the story, I did not think, oh, wait, PlayStation said they were doing that. What the fuck? My first thought was good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah. This is happening. Like, because I, I'm someone who. I'm one of those people who don't use Discord that much, not because mm. it's not a great app, but because I'm just not talking to people on the internet too much like right. that. Um, Twitter is my main interfacing with the internet and everything else. I'm like, I'll see you in person, <laughs> <laughs> more or less. So, but don't Discord, call me. like, yeah, well, yeah, I am one of those people. Sorry to say, I, I, um, I'm not a fan of the phone call either. I'll, I'll take, I'll, I'll, you know, when the family calls, you're like, fuck, all right, like exactly. you know, you got to talk to them, but like, and text me, yeah. It's, it's hard time. for me to catch a vibe over a voice chat. That's just my problem. Mm. Um, but in any way, uh, I'm happy that Discord's coming to Xbox. I think that the PlayStation partnership might affect why it's this weird roundabout way where you have to go through the mobile app and you have to connect your Xbox account. It does on stuff. paper sound obtuse. Yeah, it sounds very strange. So what I'm thinking is that they're doing it this way either to get around a restriction Sony put in place. So maybe they said, hey, you can't put a native Discord app on Xbox. Or maybe this is just Microsoft's way of doing it the fastest and simplest way. And maybe a fuller integration comes later down the line. 
perhaps this PlayStation uh, integration that they talked about, maybe it's taking so long because they want a deeper integration. Maybe there is going to be either a native app on PlayStation or maybe Sony's going to save a lot of money on their on their infrastructure and their server costs and say, hey, all the party chats and whatnot, it's all handled through Discord. So there's going to be a Discord icon on your little menu in PS5, and then you go there, open it up, find your voice channels or whatever, and do it that way. I could really see that happening. Because if you think about how parties are set up already, you, like I, I remember back on PS4, it was like this, and on PS5, it's very similar. You you have your voice channels whenever you want to kick off a voice channel. But then other than that, it's just a text thread. Yep. And all you got to do is make multiple text threads for each text channel and then multiple voice channels for each voice channel. And half the interface is already there. So perhaps that's what they're doing. Perhaps that's why it's taking so long. Maybe it's not an app. It's just a full-on conversion of the system PlayStation has into Discord. Um, I would welcome it. I think Discord is the best. How do I say this? If If Twitter is like the recess where everyone's running around talking to, to each okay. other and sharing everything, then Discord are a bunch of lunch tables. You can go to each lunch table wow. to talk to whoever you want to, very specific groups. And I'm more of a person where I like just being able to run around anywhere, so I'm more of a recess person. But I respect the lunch table. I think lunch table has a place, and I think most people like lunch tables because look how popular Discord is. So I think um, that was an incredible analogy, first off, by your part. Um, that, oh. that is perfect to put it yeah the special lunch tables that that i literally cannot think of any better way of explaining it um I about this. but you know, <laughs> I, I stayed up late night yeah i did um <laughs> i want to quickly go back to i just theorized because i don't know if you use the party chat often on playstation but at least to me i think it's awful maybe like they're doing a full rip out and just discord is replacing it maybe um I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of how they're doing. Like, you can start a party, and it's like a, it's almost like a server on Discord. Like, you can put yeah. things in there, and it's like a constant thing that stays there. Like, even if you leave it, and then you just read. So now that I'm thinking about it, is maybe they almost did try to do this Discord like thing with parties, and maybe they're just like, hey, mate, we let's they know. They know how to do this much better. Let's let's partner with them and have them. R let's rip out this and put in Discord over it. I don't know, but I still was a bit shocked that Xbox today that I believe it was th uh, this morning just went Discord. Oh no, I think it was yesterday. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Xbox was just like you can use Discord uh, Xbox Insiders right now, and I was like, what? Yeah. And also, yeah. it might speak to. Um, I mean, clearly Microsoft has better engineers, so. I think that might True. just speak to they're just a lot easier to work with, whereas PlayStation's kind of maybe working with bubblegum, whereas they're working with like steel. I don't yeah, know. a lot of red tape, I'm sure, is over at PlayStation where you got to talk to a guy who knows a guy in order to get approved so you can finally do work on a thing, I imagine. Yeah, um, it just sounds like that. That's a vibe I get from a lot of the Sony conversations. I do, I too. Yeah, every time something happens, I always go, what the f exactly i can't play siphon filter because i downloaded it back in 2005 like what do you mean <laughs> yeah dude this is so much stuff where, like you did what now like the play in oh god I i'm still salty about um the ps5 mass advertisement screen when i fucking turn on my system my god is that annoying yeah i thought microsoft was annoying with their ads my god when i turn on my they're just like Boom, Fortnite. <laughs> There's a new skin. Go buy it. My God, dude. Like, let's have a little bit of restraint, PlayStation. I understand uh, you probably make a shit ton of money, but oh, dude, show. relax. <laughs> hey, <sighs> that's how it is. Gotta love it. I said we get back to it. <laughs> NFTs. Minecraft earlier this week announced that they are not letting users use any type of NFT or blockchain technology in Minecraft. Here's a statement from the Minecraft blog, the mind blog, if you will. <laughs> Quote, some companies have recently launched NFT implement imp my God, implementations. My God, I can't talk today. Yeah. Implant. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That are associated with <laughs> leave it, leave implementations. Behind. Implementations. Thank you. Implementations. Jesus Christ. That are associated <laughs> with Minecraft world files and skin packs. Other examples of how NFTs and blockchains could be utilized with Minecraft, including creating Minecraft collectible NFTs, allowing players to earn NFTs through activities performed on a server, 
or earning Minecraft NFT rewards for activities outside of the game. End quote. Each of these uses of NFT or any uh, blockchain technologies creates digital ownership based on scarcity and exclusion, which does not align with Minecraft values of creativity, inclusion, and playing together. End quote. I think they uh, nailed on uh, two of my main annoyances with NFTs. Scarcity, which is fake. It's a fake scarcity because that's not that's it's just not how the internet works. And uh, exclusion, maybe not one of my mains, but it is a thing. But uh, I, we've talked about NFTs a few times, not too, too much because uh, Alex just doesn't care too much about them. So I usually rant for like two minutes and then we move on. But just really quick, I, I, I this is there's nothing but good. I, I don't I don't see why why they would let this outside force come in for absolutely no reason and just be like, we're going to sell you a bunch of this stuff. And it's like, what? Yeah. And it's all based on this digital scarcity which is it's not a real item so how is it scarce because it's you can make it online like what's going on who knows but that that is this is this whole thing is like yeah you know, i'm i'm happy to hear it. i'm not a minecraft guy but it, it was it was good to be like yeah that makes sense don't need any of this on your platform yeah yeah i'm right there with you um i'm glad that they took a stand for it i feel like you know Typically, a lot of these Microsoft-owned companies know when to say the right things when it comes to stuff like this. So um, I'm not too surprised on there. And also, this is a very big deal because Minecraft is one of these games where a lot of these NFT folks who are yes. like, oh, join our crypto thing. We're going to make a video game. Half of them look like Minecraft or Roblox or whatever. So to have the 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 father of all these projects say, hey, no NFTs probably eliminates a lot of possibilities for a lot of those like fake games that they were making um and just disrupts a lot of that so this is actually pretty massive i think it's going to be a big blow to the nft game development community if one exists i'm pretty sure one exists there's like there. five people it, like fuck yeah <laughs> exactly well there's five people who are like fuck but under them are about a thousand people who invested a million dollars so it's like you know, they're fucked too, um, which is also part of the whole, like, you know, just people are going to take advantage of it. I don't like that. But, uh, yes, yeah, good to see Minecraft stand up and say, now nah, we're not doing this shit. Uh, and, yeah, nothing but positive vibes here. Uh, I can't think of a single negative thing. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I think that was, well, put it at the end there. Yeah, I, 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 and it's not because I don't understand NFTs. I, I, I feel like I understand pretty well. I, I don't understand how this thing has value. And, again, mm -hmm. I understand... It's very capitalistic to be like, hey, whatever someone is willing to pay for is the value. So I get it. But yeah, I, the fundamentals of NFTs just don't make sense to me. Yeah. Just whatever, I, I, the, whatever the fuck you're trying to say, like this is minted and it's not can't be duplicated. But they're all. And, and I got so upset because every NFT was an ape for like three, four or five months. And I'm like, <laughs> why is this ape Dude, everywhere? Let me tell you how upset it made me. Because, OK, long story short. Eminem and Snoop Dogg were beefing for a little while there. Oh my god, yeah. I, th I think I know what the fuck you're about to say. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were beefing for a little while, so when I saw a fucking music video come up months later, that was Eminem featuring Snoop Dogg, I'm like, oh my god. They made up. But the whole music video is just their NFT apes. It's just like their, their NFT characters doing shit. And I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> Why are we here? What the fuck? I wonder. So, yeah, that was upsetting. I want to talk to Snoop Dogg and be like, "What's an NFT?" And he'd be like, <laughs> "I don't fucking know." Some guy came up to me and was like, "I'll give you a lot of money to do this thing." And I'm like, "All right, fucking." Who I'm cares? Keep it 100 percent with you. I think Eminem's that way too. I guarantee you, does not know what the fucking NFT is. Eminem's smoking 70 cigars right now, going, "You said what? Sure, fuck <laughs> it. How much are you giving me? Go ahead. I have to do nothing. Yeah, that sounds good." Yeah. I got to change my Twitter picture. I'm not even on there. You're cool. <laughs> it's all just a fucking intern. Exactly. I do all these fake spliffs with people. <laughs> Eminem has to be the, oh, the one of the biggest people where it's like you you are you love the talk shit game. Like he fucking loves that. Where it's like I will beef I with know. anyone about anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it 
It depends. It's he, it's more he he reacts when he gets shot at more than he like like he never See? starts a, he never like starts some shit and is like oh I'm just gonna talk shit just because but like like Machine Gun Kelly it's because he was doing all these interviews talking about his daughter Snoop Dogg was like oh I don't listen to Eminem the fuck are you talking about in some interview okay I did like, miss the, I did I did miss the Snoop Dogg thing I didn't know that I thought he yeah. just started with Snoop I was like fuck first off I would also start shit with Snoop Dogg if I think he would give two shits about me so I get I nah. get it so you get the money but um I I yeah, did not know that so I I. Maybe I am wrong with where I'm talking about. Yeah, it's one of those things where, like, if you say his name in vain, he comes for you. But at the same time, <laughs> like I know that's crazy. Situation. It's like a Candyman <laughs> or a Bloody Mary situation. You say it three times, yeah. it's coming at you. More or less. But at the same time, the stands themselves kind of blow it up into a bigger thing. Because Snoop Dogg saying, oh, I don't listen to Eminem like that. Not really a big story. Because most of us aren't trying to listen to fucking Kim in the car. <laughs> like, we're, we're not trying to listen to some fucking bloody murder while we're driving. So that's fine. Or chainsaw. But it's the fact that, yeah. oh, exactly. But it, it's the fact that, like, oh, he was on the Up and Smoke tour. And he doesn't listen to the artist that's supposed to be his, his friend and collaborator. It's like not a big a deal but then the fans blew it up and now eminem has to make a line about it in a song and then they gotta make up as a whole thing it's silly okay. we're silly and it's eminem fans. an nft music video uh, god damn it makes me sad <sighs> let's uh let's hopefully get... it's not something they repeat <laughs> let's rinse our mouths a little bit PlayStation is continuing its push into the esports scene with another acquisition in the form of Repeat.gg. Now, what the hell is that? That's what I asked myself. Thanks for asking. Uh, Repeat.gg hosts leaderboard technology that tracks how players are performing in games, allowing participation in a tournament. Well, and this is this is me putting that. I'm pretty sure this is why. Without having to stream their footage, so they get to link a a leaderboard that will keep it for them without them having to like show someone what they're doing upon looking around repeat.gg host tournaments for prizes nothing out of the ordinary it seems pretty it seemed very um uh i want to say game battles yes it was, battles it, yeah yeah it was like uh join league of legends tournament for ten dollars worth of x thing like, there's a bunch of that stuff playstation okay. acquiring uh, is quite interesting and shows continued interest in the new power scenes of course last march let's not forget playstation purchased the popular fighting game event evo for an undeclosed amount so this more playstation going into the esports scene i'm very curious when we'll see kind of what is behind this now this might be in preparation for their what was it 23 games or something of, oh yeah of games as a service a so multiplayer games yeah, yeah this is uh yeah we're like oh you know what we're going into games as a service like okay cool that's not why i have a playstation but awesome but anyways <laughs> um i think uh i'm assuming that's why they're kind of slowly ga gathering these uh esports things so they they have a native playstation thing to debut their Last Certainly. of Us online factions uh, tournament, whatever that they'll do at, uh, at an event God. or something. Yeah, I'd you, kill to watch that. That would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Holy hell! Uh, what but did yeah, you he, did you make anything of this? I don't really have too much to say because they just haven't done anything really with this yet. So I, I just don't feel like I have much to add. Yeah, part of me, part of me wants to be like, oh, there's something big. It's all leading up to something. But in actuality, I feel like this is just them diversifying their income mm. uh, because, you know, you could you there is a possibility that, yes, for every Last of Us, for every Uncharted, for every Horizon, you have a Days Gone. And Days Gone actually did very well, it did. but it's not held in that high regard to the same as those other games so like you could always release a dud with this business model so this is them being like hey if we're failing here at least we have the biggest fighting game tournament to still make us money at least we have this massive i think for repeat gg i think that is less of them being like so that's going to make money for us so we have that it's more of a thing they're going to probably actively use yeah and you, you think about what they say, PlayStation Stars? I don't know. Yes. I think that was last we week, We covered right? that last week. Yeah, well, of course, Mario, yes. not Bros. Yeah, they had the PlayStation exactly. Star program that seems like it's going to replace Sony Rewards in a sense, and you'll get points for trophies, buying games, etc. Anything, mm -hmm. if, you, if you use Microsoft Rewards or Nintendo Rewards, you know That's what it. you're getting with that. 
Certainly. I, I feel like they're going to be using repeat GG in a similar way where it might not necessarily be attached to stars, but I can imagine them being like, like they already, they did that tournament thing on PlayStation four. They had that whole feature. Oh I think God. This is going to replace that. Jesus. Yeah, I forgot I all about that. Holy fuck. deep cut. Deep yeah, cut. yeah. 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 I feel like this is them saying, all right, let's bring that back, but have like actual awards. Yes. It's a, it's a last of us factions tournament, but you're doing it for ten dollars worth of in-game scrap or whatever yeah or you know something like that so that people can actually get some type of reward and they don't have to stream their gameplay forever because not everybody can really do that so um yeah i think this is great uh i once again i don't think this is i don't think this is leading to anything big i think this is just playstation being like yo we're about to have a lot of multiplayer games a lot of them might be able to use these types of services so let's just you know get all the possible money that we can from these from these things and hopefully one of these games as a service titles is uh playstation all-stars reboot or something <laughs> don't let it <laughs> that's die. all i got don't let it die i'm right there never let it i'm die. that with vita i'm just fucking annoying like i every time i can bring it up i'm like <laughs> make a vita man what like there's the just thing. no reason not to if they made a vita if they made a sequel to the vita it wouldn't sell if they made a vita that was a sequel to the switch or the steam deck okay yeah, that, yeah. I, I was just about to be like i don't give they don't have to make a fucking steam deck boom yeah exactly it's if they do that, dollars w. but like if they just brought back playstation all-stars and just add the characters people wanted you're getting a couple million <laughs> like it, you already got it same exact game too just add fucking crash and actual metal gear solid characters i'm like waiting that. i'm waiting for in 10 years you've made it you're a big you're big money man you're you, oh, you're Lord. you're financially stable and you walk up to playstation and you you sit down in a very michael b jordan talking to dc wanting to be a superman movie and go how much how much for playstation all-stars I, this is gonna fucking happen i'm not walking out of this room without agreeing to playstation all-stars Battle Royale. Right i'm not leaving <laughs> I'm hooked up. I'm hooked up. I'm not going. <laughs> you cement you your my feet. pockets are full. Lies. <laughs> you cement your feet to the ground like a protester. Like I ain't going anywhere. This is gonna take oh a long God. time to get me out. But uh, I, 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 I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> uh, I do. I, I'm right there with you. They need to make a PlayStation All Stars only because I will be so happy for you. I don't even think I played All Stars. I think I played it one time or something. But I just need it needs to be made just so I can be like, good for Emmett. And then I keep My scrolling on Twitter. Stop the day oh no no, no 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 no! That that's that'll be the day. That'll be the day. Like everyone uh, tweets you, Barack Obama comes out and he's like, Emmett, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Obama walks down the golden step that Kojima went down. <laughs> He's like, everyone, I'm here to announce. Everyone and Emmett Walker Jr. I'm here to announce. <laughs> oh my fuck! I'm not gonna lie. I've ha I've actually had a dream. It wasn't Obama, but I've had a dream where they were like. Like it was a press conference and it was a uh, fucking Shuhei Yoshida. And he's like, and we got one more thing for you. Also, Emmett, you might like this one. And then they just cut. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I say my name and I'm like, what the fuck's going to happen? <laughs> Picturing you waking up like <laughs> someone oh there. God. Oh. I just wait, I'm just dripping sweat. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I, oh, I can't. I just want the day. <sighs> Insert whoever you wanted to say. I want someone huge. I want, I want someone you can't get bigger than. Like... Dwayne Oprah. the Rock Johnson, the Pope, the Pope comes out and he's the like, Pope. I was given orders. <laughs> Emmett Watkins Jr., you better be a Christian now. I got it. <laughs> My God, I would ascend. I would literally up 47 power levels in one second. <laughs> Christ. He might hit um, Scooby-Doo levels of power. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm turning to Shaggy on site. Mm -hmm. This is 1% of my power. God, multiverse is in stores soon. Yeah, apparently, that has a terrible entry fee, a uh, founder's pack or something. It's like super, oh, well, super expensive. Apparently, it's free to play anyway, so I kind of expect that. You gotta make the money, I guess, right? Yeah, for sure. A new player has entered the stage in Wildflower, a new studio founded by none other than Bruce Straley. Former game director at Naughty Dog partnered with, of course, Neil Druckmann back in the day to direct The Last of Us, The Last of Us Left Behind, and Uncharted 2, and eventually Uncharted 4 when Amy Henning left the project uh, partway through the development. Let's talk about some of the talent that comes with them. Uh, th there's a lot of ex Naughty Dog devs like Al Mudina, Soria, Sancho, who was, who was also at Naughty Dog as a lead animator. 
on Uncharted Lost Legacy and Last of Us Part 2. Nicholas Lance, a designer that worked on 2019's Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Cosmo Fumo, who was technical director on The Pathless, and much more on this theme. Uh, they, they have a full page on their uh, official website if you want to see everyone. There's a couple uh, veterans and a couple newbies to the stage. Uh, the team is still mm -hmm. hiring. Their webpage already leads uh, them to a good start on a well-rounded team. Now, the game they are working on isn't talked about much, but Bruce did say it was, quote, smallish, end quote, and it was, quote, creatively charged and uniquely stylized, end quote, which means mm. it's like we, like, just started. So like we don't I don't know what the game is, okay? <laughs> so uh but um this was very exciting. I mean Bruce Raley, I mean is not a small guy. Like this is this True. is one of the this is uh this might be one of the most marquee game directors out there next to Neo, next to Hideo, ne next to you know, you could throw a bunch of names out there. This is very exciting. Won't be shocked if uh PlayStation just immediately goes and buys them. Being honest with you, I'll call it right now. They bought Haven and they bought uh <laughs> Fire Sprite. Oh, no. Uh, uh, not Fire Sprite. No. Uh, uh, Bungie? Yeah. Oh, oh you yeah, talking yeah, yeah. about indies. Yeah, there yeah, was, Bungie they did buy. yeah, it was Haven they bought, and they bought one other like indie that hasn't even released the game yet. Maybe I'm misremembering, but regardless. Oh, they're partnering with uh, Firewalk Studios. That's what I fucked up. Thank you. Yeah, they partnered, it. did not purchase, but they are partnered with them. Thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, they straight up just bought Haven without really anything um they, they probably have like some good concept art and they have a bunch of engineers on the team so they're cooking something up i'm very excited to see what the, what they have up because something was so compelling to playstation that they were like we're gonna buy you before you're even halfway through your game so i'm curious what that is uh i won't be shocked if playstation just goes up to wildfire is like what you working on in like six months and be like how much how much well we'll definitely get you uh so i'll be i'll be interested to see that what made you anything jump out at Wildflower, yeah, again, they, they didn't really talk about too much. I think I'm just excited because this is a very talented studio. Very small, but I think we need we we always need uh, new studios in, in the mix, especially in this days of acquisition wars that we're seeing ourselves in. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll say this. I don't I don't think PlayStation is going to buy these guys just because they seem too small right now. Um, but hey, or yes, hey, hey, I mean, Haven is Haven? about the same size. I guarantee you Haven is going to make a game that is going to be a, a closer to a triple A game. Well, they're working on a games like as a service, on. right? Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, like oh, that's what you I see. You're saying a triple A yeah. game. That I sorry. Yeah. I missed something a, I missed with like both. a long, a long monetary tale or something with high production value. And even if this Haven game doesn't have high production value, it's going to have a long monetary tale because it's a games as a service. So like, I think that's what PlayStation is really out here looking for. I feel like this, uh, sorry wildflower interactive i really feel like they're going to be closer to like an aggro crab like the folks who made going under and that crab dark souls game that's about to come out um that's the type of vibe and size and scope i'm thinking of maybe even something like a uh what is it the, the, the tacoma devs i forget who made tacoma and gone home fulbright um something of that size and scale which uh sounds great I i'm definitely gonna play whatever these guys make because it's a good team um, looking at their website that they have linked here, uh, it is very, it's giving like media molecule, but less colorful. Very. Like it has that whimsical, like, oh, we're all artistic. Look at our fun little doodles. And it's like, like it gives a, what's that one? The Fumito Ueda studio that closed down recently, actually. Um, is it Fumito Ueda? The guy who made Wadham and Nobi Nobi Boy. Oh, Jesus. Hold I on. might be saying his name wrong. Yeah, I think, I think you are. Hold on developer i spelled developer with a three because i'm stupid you said nobody no boy right yeah nobody no boy yeah, yeah. fun of media mm -hmm. is the name of that deb um r.i.p to that developer because i'm pretty sure they're wrapping up soon because i don't think wadham was the hit they wanted it to be um but yeah it has that kind of aesthetic to it where it's colorful and like whimsical artistic um we'll see what they actually end up making hopefully it's something like i could take like like some of these indies that are a little bit more scale scaled up like you got your 2d platformers and whatnot and your top down shooters and such i want something that's more of a 3d thing maybe not even like a platformer but something like your wave tail is kind of the vibe that i get from their website of a type of game they would make if you guys remember wave tail that was a stadia exclusive but it's coming to consoles this year um very cool little indie action platformer where you're surfing on water a bunch um 
And yeah, I, I, I don't know. There's not too much to go off on, except, you know, the team's talented. A lot of the games that they've worked on, I like. I like a good Call of Duty. I like a good Naughty Dog game. Um, so, you know, good pedigree. We just got to see what comes of it at this point. So we'll find out soon. So I, did, I, um, I am a little bit off. I think um, it looks like Haven has already grown to 50 uh, people. Um, or at least over yeah. that. I'm having trouble finding a full head count. And I was also trying to see if I could talk about their. Um, I see this is right here. Haven talks future of cloud gaming development. So I, I we might be talking about um, different situations. I might be comparing apples to origins here. So I could be wrong here. But um, they're talking about uh, the, what they want to do with cloud game, which they did reference when they were purchased, I believe. And they might be actually more uh, interested in their tech or know how versus what they're actually making. So maybe mm. I am just comparing two things that just are not meant to be. Um, well, I think this will be probably, I think you're right here. This will probably be a more wait and see approach with PlayStation because um, I think Haven, like I said, it's just, it's, it's just completely different with how they're approaching the games. They're probably just trying to make a game, whereas Haven is almost developing technology and then a game versus mm -hmm. uh, just straight out of game. But uh, yeah, a bunch of talent in there. Uh, very excited. For sure, for sure. Looking forward to it. That's the news for the week. Let's get into day updates. Today's Region Ninja Turtles Cow Bunga Collection launches on August 30th. Steam, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series S, X, Xbox One, and Switch. Dragon Ball The Breakers releases October 14th on every platform. I actually didn't grab that. I'll go double check that in a second. There will be a showcase for Destiny 2 on August 23rd. Unclear on what it is. They just hyped you up with a little 23 second trailer. It looks like it's going to. If I have to assume, we're two seasons technically out of the next expansion. So we'll probably get a tiny little look at that. They might go as big as announce something uh, like a new subclass or something like that. They did say showcase. Mm -hmm. They usually don't use those terms lightly. So we might mm -hmm. see something relatively big August 23rd. So almost a month away. Boy, howdy. Now, this is a mess. I apologize, Achievers. This was going out as we were going live. This is the Ubisoft... Uh, uh, stockholder relations pr relations all these things that was slowly going out because they were having an active earnings call so i had to straight up just copy what they put so it's going to be a bit of a mess forgive me but uh they listed out the following gameplay reviews for uh mario and rapid sparks of hope and skull of bones are going to be released october 20th and over 8th respectively we all knew that but that's just a refresher for you just in case you haven't uh you didn't catch the uh last week when they when we figured that out Reveal of Tom Clancy's Division Resurgence for mobile. Uh, remember that was announced. I uh, okay, cool. Not a big mobile. I guy. might play that. You I really? Was... Oh, I didn't know you were a mobile yeah. guy. Well, I I've been coming more and more of a mobile guy now that I have this Wi-Fi. I mean, part of the reason I put up this Wi-Fi is so I could play Fortnite from bed. So I'm becoming more and more of a mobile player. This Division mobile game. It just looks like the Division, but on a phone. And that looks cool enough for me to play around with for maybe an hour or two. We'll see if I stick with it long term, but it looks solid. Signature of a new high value licensing partnership on mobile for one of our triple A brands. Hmm. Okay, that, that was more of a announcement of an announcement really kind of thing. So it'll probably be a while oh. for you to hear that, but something of value has been made for them. That will be a mobile game. Bet it's Far Cry. I don't think that's, that's crazy to say. Uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll. You know what? That's a good guess. I, I I'll say Splinter Cell because they hate me. <laughs> Avatar, they, didn't they cancel a Splinter Cell game later on in here? <laughs> we did. Yes, they did. Avatar: oh, Frontiers of Pandora will now release 2023 to 2024. So just a straight out physical year change. We are committed mm -hmm. to delivering a. By the way, fucking called it. Yeah, we are committed to delivering a cutting edge immersive experience that takes full advantage of next gen technology. As this amazing global entertainment brand represents a major multi-year opportunity for Ubisoft. Wow. So they're like, get ready for sequels, motherfuckers. <laughs> That's what they're saying. We also Ugh. decided to release in 2023 to 2024 a smaller unannounced premium game originally slated for 2022 to 2023, meaning something that has not been announced has been moved just like Avatar has. So we don't even know what that game is. Hmm. Ubisoft is that the smaller Last of Us game or not Last of Us? Smaller and uh, oh god, Assassin's Creed game maybe. It technically but could be because it's a smaller unannounced premium game. Usually in terms of premium, they mean like this is a high key marquee title for us. Yeah. Small and we do know Assassin's Creed um 
Rift was the code name, I believe, is smaller. So I uh, mean, you might be onto something there. Um, we go. already knew this, but I'll cover it again. You software review the future of Assassin's Creed brand in September. And just like Emmett previously said, Ubisoft has canceled development on Splinter Cell VR and Ghost Recon Frontline and two other unannounced games. That is a big deal. So they canceled a VR game that they're actively working on and they canceled Ghost Recon Frontline, which is something they already announced that was an active development. That that shows Ubisoft being like, we got to fix stuff because they're I feel like they have found themselves in a rut. And I think they yeah. are starting to realize that in sales. And they go, mm-hmm. we got to fix this before we release another dud. Yeah, I. it's less that they feel like, yes, I think rut is the best way to put it, because it's not like these games are bad. Like even Far Cry 6, not bad. It's just more Far Cry. It's just more Far Cry. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. that's why I wanted to make sure to use the word rut. Not terrible. Not, it's just Far Cry 6. Did you play five? You probably played mm-hmm. six then with a slightly yeah. different story. So. I, I will say it's really funny that Ghost Recon Frontline got canceled because we were all roasting that. Roast, no, I roast no fuck. I was like, Frontline? That sounds terrible. <laughs> like, not just, even the time. It was the gameplay itself. It's like, oh, this is just Warzone, but Ghost Recon. It's like, God. all right, great. Like, we, we needed another one of these. Thank you. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, X Defiant. I, hey, pause. No. I no, played I won't. it. It's that been looks a long time. Fucking terrible since the gameplay beta with thing that i was in but i played some of it it's okay it's 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 totally competent i don't want to say it's good because i don't know if it's actually good or if it just checks all the boxes correctly but it checks those fucking boxes i don't know how i think i signed something so i don't want to talk about it too much okay but sorry yeah i, I was about I to press am, you a bit but you're fine you're fine well you at this point how long has it been <laughs> It's been over a year since I played this thing. So, like, I'm sure it's changed a bunch since. But in any case, like, I am interested enough to where I want to know more about that game. I want to know a release date. I, I want to know more because I had fun. That long story short, I had fun. So, I'm not saying, I'm not disagreeing with any of your opinions. Of course, your opinions. All I'm saying is, you weren't really praising it. <laughs> you were just saying, uh, yeah, this yeah. was good. And I'm like, too many great games for a good game to excite me like there's just yeah, too much shit there. i can't i and also with the name x defiant you might as well just say shooter the game just fuck you <laughs> like what are we doing with this what do we do i mean they they had to convey oh it's call of duty but like beats rage 2 and it's like who asked for that <laughs> no one really <laughs> who asked, who said who said they wanted this it's yeah. just i i really and i, I ubisoft was on a roll i fucking for, Ubisoft of 2013 to like 2017, mm, I guess. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, whenever that was. Uh, yeah, yeah, 2018, something like that. Anyways, yeah, Ish. they were having a good stride for a while, and I feel like we just started to we're starting to dip. We're starting to dip back to like 27, I want to say to like 2011 or something, where Ubisoft had the issues of maybe getting purchased by uh, Vivendi and there was a lot of oh, issues yeah. going on. They weren't having the greatest games at the time. There was a lot of things that when a Ubisoft game was announced, you didn't really get super excited. You're like, all right, is it going to be good? But I feel like we're getting back now to where like I hear a Ubisoft game and I'm like, is this going to be another uh, uh, hyperscape? Like what the mm-hmm. fuck? Like, what are we doing here? We going to make God. an next defiant hyperscape now? We, how, how long? A year? And then you're going to close it again? Like, what? what's going hyperscape on? Hyperscape was also cool, but it was another game. It, it was cool, but game it was another. Great. It was another. I remember playing it on my crappy PC back then. I was like, oh, this is cool. And then you're like. <laughs> this won't last four seasons. <laughs> All right. All right. So, like, I can play this game times 20 in Warzone. So, why? Yeah. If, you, if you're not dedicated, why? why try like they clearly weren't dedicated they quit after a year so like Mm -hmm. so like why even why even try i don't know i really do hope they turn around though i love ubisoft i mean assassin's creed's some of my favorite franchises ever in gaming so hopefully they turn i think they will yeah certainly i think hopefully they aren't purchased by fucking somebody though (laughs) ea's final fifa game fifa 23 will launch september 30th can't believe i'm saying it but ea's final game that will be called fifa 23 comes out september 30th a reminder they do not have the license anymore so it will be called I, I, ea 
uh, uh, fuck. football club. Football club. I was gonna say that, but I was like, it I can't be that. But EAFC, it, I think. Yeah. So, FIFA fans, get ready. That's gonna be. I can't wait. Honestly, I can't wait because that's the biggest change we've seen in sports in a very long time, aside from, of course, MLB uh, about two years ago. Certainly. Uh, also, there will be crossplay at launch between same generation consoles. Same generation consoles. Epic Game Store's next free title will be Lawn Mowing Simulator. My dad rejoiced in happiness from this. July 28th until August 4th, this will replace Tannenberg and Shop Titans, which are free until July 28th. So you can still claim them as of recording. And as Side a side note, you, Shop Titans is actually a free to play game. These are free items for Shop Titans. <laughs> so okay. that's a good distinction. I that. had no I, I read it was, uh, it sounded just like Moonlighter. So I was like, this just sounds like Moonlighter. So I, I was like, cool, I have Moonlighter, though. Yeah, certainly. It's Moonlighter without the combat, really. <laughs> oh, is it really? Oh, wow. Never, oh, it's oh. literally just that. I like that it skated both. So I definitely probably wouldn't be into that. I'll admit, that's the news for the week. Of course, I end the show just like I began it with a singular question. That's what's queued up for the week. This, is, of course, can be podcasts, a movie, TV show. A book, hmm. comic book, anything in between. Of course, this isn't just for Emmett. This is for you listening to the show right now. You leave a comment below. You can, of course, go over to patreon.com slash Achievers. Support us on the tiers that DMs us directly. You can get added to the show as a question or some sort of silly remark that you want to make about Emmett's room hmm. being just a fucking clusterfuck of action figures. It looks really cool, though, <laughs> so I'm not going to judge you too hard. It looks really cool. I was about cool. to say, if I turn this camera, it will be a clusterfuck of a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you, this side of my desk, it's a reason it's oh, not yeah. on camera. Reason I knocked something over earlier on the show and no one noticed. So I'm like, yo, hopefully this side of my desk stays chill. Yep. <laughs> He's like, everyone relax over there. But of course, thank you so much for listening to this show, YouTube, podcast service, all that stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Thank you so much. But just listening is enough, of course. Emmett, what do you have queued up? What do I have queued up? Well, um, I said, I don't know if I said this on the podcast or right before, but I am going on vacation this weekend. Mm. And I have a couple things queued up. Um, literally, I just got paid last night, so I'm about to buy the eighth Jackbox Party Pack game. Um, I own all of them except the eighth one, and it went on sale literally yesterday. So I'm like, excellent. That's a sign from God. Um, so snagging that one. Thank uh, God. I have, yeah, <laughs> shout out to you. Uh, thanks for making sales. Anyway, <laughs> um, what the fuck? Maybe do something oh. about the cancer thing, though. Yeah, maybe, cancer and maybe. like, you know, like people can't play their Switch in the heat anymore. Do something about that. Yeah, do something about that. <laughs> Anywho, stop making it um, about you. All right, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say, stop making yeah. it about you, God. Okay. <laughs> exactly, man. Let let somebody else have a holiday. Um, Cupid's over here struggling. Uh, I don't know. I'm just talking shit now. Um, but Wales Interactive makes a lot of those like uh, live action FMV games where you can make the choices. Um, I have a lot of those added to my card as well. I'm gonna buy a bunch of those, and hopefully we'll be able to play one or two of them uh, while on this trip. Because all the trip is is we're going to an Airbnb. We rented it out for the weekend. We're just chilling at the Airbnb the whole weekend. So I'm taking that as an opportunity to bring my karaoke machine, of course, play some Jackbox, and play some Wales Interactive games. Hopefully, so yeah, gonna play through some of those. And also, I found out on Reddit that today's the last day you can claim that six month free trial of Apple TV through PS5. So I'm probably going to do that. I need to do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't even yeah. know about that. Yeah, they announced it like when the PS5 first came out. And I was like, OK, I'll do that eventually. Didn't realize there was a time limit. So going to do that. And perhaps I'll be watching either Ted Lasso and or Severance in the near future. Yeah, so. that's the two things I want to watch because everyone's like, oh, it's so good. I'm like, all right, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. It's, yeah. it's like with everything else. They're like, I'll get to it. But it seems exactly. like it seems like I'll get six months free. Yeah, I definitely need to do that. Definitely. I'm going to hop on there. So yeah, that's what I got queued up. And of course, you know, more Raji. I bought Stranger Paradise. Still haven't played it since the last podcast. Oh my so God. That, you buy, I, I think you bought that. that two weeks ago when you were on the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did. I remember because you said you had a meeting with Chaos. So yeah, you have not played the game in two weeks. <laughs> oh, I get yeah. it though. I get it. I'd say we've all been there. It's just too busy. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What do I have so, queued yeah, up? I up. have uh, As Dusk Falls. I need to save Alex Van Anken, of course. Um, Shout out to Alex. Yeah, he's in the game. Congratulations, Alex. I hope he got paid a lot of money. <laughs> That's a joke, of course. He's not in the game. Um, Stray. I uh, will be checking out Stray as Dusk Falls, which, by the way, I know I talk a lot of shit about subscription servers. I didn't pay for any of these games. 
any additional yeah. money. So yeah. feel pretty yeah, yeah. good playing these two games without uh, doing anything else. Um, I uh, I game share with uh, with Alex, of course, my co-host that's not here right now. Um, and he purchased the Dark Pictures anthology, so I'm gonna download all those, play all, play oh, yeah. probably start slowly getting through Man of Madon and the other two, Little Hope and all that such. House of Ashes. Uh, get prepared. Like uh, get uh, prepared for the fourth one that comes out that ends the. I guess it says season one of the anthology. I'm like, cool, whatever. God, do you think those things out, man? Yo, I respect it. They they got it worth that. Go like they got a plan and they're executing. They're executing. It's like Insomniac, mm-hmm. where it's like. I don't get it, but good on you, man. I don't understand how it's possible. Maybe they just chain them to their desks and dare yeah. them to say anything. I don't know. I'll say Insomniac, they used to have a really bad workplace culture. Like, they used to overwork and do all this shit horribly. So by PS4 generation, they definitely buttoned up. Hopefully Supermass is on that same path. I hope they're not making this and it's and everyone's tired. Hopefully not, but we'll find out. Well, and, well, for, well, and I always like to put it, and if they're tired, hopefully they're getting paid for it. That's all, you know. Make sure you yeah, get paid like, for it. If they're working you like a fucking horse, walk up to them and be like, where's my fucking paycheck, bitch? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know, work hard if you want to, but, but yeah, make sure, you can, make sure you're getting paid. Well, definitely. Uh, the horror stories, I remember um, all the stories of like the, uh, like the head of the team being like, oh, and my mattress is over here where I sleep in the office. And I'm like, dude. I get yeah, hey, shout shout out that. to you, bro. But like that is a that's burning the fuse on both ends, man. You can't do that forever. Yeah. <laughs> like you're gonna you fucking have a heart attack at 54 or something. Like yeah, you, you gotta <laughs> relax, sure. man. But yeah, yeah the, you always hear those horror stories. That's stuff. something we don't ever talk about too much on the show because this it would just be me talking never really about myself about that. Cause Alex doesn't really uh, have too much in the background on like the actual business side of the industry. But yeah, like the actual stress i'm sure many developers have to go through and then have to times it by two in certain situations and then like mm-hmm. having and hearing about the weird like if you work overtime like you'll be entered in a drawing for 100 bucks and like weird shit like that just pay them yeah. more what are you They'll doing be like oh, here's some pizza and it's like bro fuck the pizza give us all a couple dollars more since we're all here late yep. and then people losing their families and shit like uh, yeah 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 i'll never forget god of war documentary um yeah chris or is it Chris uh, Barlog? No, Corey. Well, Corey Barlog, of course, but but his, uh, his um, basically his second in command. I'm blanking on her name, and I'm so sorry. Jesus Christ, I had her name all the time, and I'm blanking on it. Um, they asked her, um, did you have? Uh, they asked someone, did you sacrifice anything for to make the game, and or was it hard? It was something to that effect. And they go to her and ask her the same question, and she says, "Can we not talk about that right now?" And like she's like holding back tears, and I'm like, "Fuck, man!" Like. He said yeah, they sacrifice yeah. a lot to make these good ass games. And yeah. again, hopefully they get something in return. And I'm sure in her case, hopefully she did. I, I would like to live in a world where they don't have to sacrifice as much. To, I agree. Or, again, unless I, I, I don't want to get in the way of people trying to make bank, though. So, like, I, yeah. I'm always in the middle because I've been there. You know, I worked when, at GameStop. When you're young, like, when you're young and no ties, then yeah, get that fucking money. Like, yeah, work as much as you want. But like, once you're settling down and like they still expect you to come in for forty extra hours, and you have two kids at home, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe don't do that. So I definitely feel that. Uh, I definitely um, I would agree with that sentiment. But yeah, but no, oh, Jesus, the, I've I've completely side directed this conversation. But uh, yeah, I had queued up D- Dusk Falls. Um, stray those are the two things i'll be focusing on forza horizon um expansion is out i try I, i'm in a big break from destiny right now because i tried getting into it and this the new advantage mm. bored me to fucking tears so i had to stop playing i was like i have to give this a break like I, you know it's just in that moment where like eh, i'm not super into that but aside from that i that will that will really be it for me i'm right in the middle of a, a just a, i sometimes i get addicted to the cooking shows i'm in the middle of watching hell's uh. kitchen just, uh-huh. it's somehow still on wow it's like the 20th Wait, new season episodes? yes they are on the 20th season at mitt walkins jr like are there more amy B- amy's baking companies out there because <laughs> that's all i want that's all i care heck? about what is that 
There's this one episode of Kitchen Nightmares where they went to a restaurant called Amy's Baking Company. This episode, I'm pretty sure, is on YouTube. Okay. And it is literally, I think it's the one time he had to walk away and just give up on them. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, my God. I watched awful. this a long time ago. I think I remember this where, like, he oh. was just like, I quit. But this. <laughs> He's just like, I'm oh, leaving. I love it. I, uh, I remember that. I remember that now. Holy God. Yeah. I can't believe I that, yeah. that jogged that memory of him just being like, I can't say yeah. this. You know, I think it was an old lady. That was it wasn't, she wasn't even that old. She was no, maybe like can't remember maybe early fifties at most, but she looked closer to like early forties. And she was just not having it. She was yeah, just she not was just nasty. It. And then she had like a sugar daddy husband who just took her side on everything. And so like it was just them getting up happens. on everybody. Customers would be like, "My food's not cooked," and he's like, "But my, my wife cooked the food. It's perfect." What the fuck are you talking about? And it's like, oh no, Oof. oh no. Oof. This this is bad, Oof. but yeah, shout out to that. Go watch that on YouTube. It's a great watch. <laughs> love that episode. I don't even watch the show, and I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect dinner time for like me and the wife. Like watch something, and then we fuck off and do our own stuff. But yeah, yeah, that's all I have for the show. That's a uh, uh, queued up. Emmett walks. James, thank you so much for joining me this week. You you are coming in clutch, uh, very very much for these uh, past few weeks while um Alex is on paternity leave. But um, yeah, before no you go, of course. Where can we find you? Uh, y'all know where I'm at. EJSpun61 is the Twitter. Uh, you can find all the stuff that I do over at VGU.TV. That's, you know, Players Club Podcast, like I said earlier. Any reviews I write, any really anything I write is over there. Um, I said this earlier. I still want this to be the case, but time is running out. Um, I've been talking about this Kendrick Lamar video review. been talking about it forever. Still want to get that done before I go on my trip tomorrow. But I go on my trip tomorrow. Oh, yeah, that is quite the challenge. <laughs> so uh, really, my goal today, because I'm doing Players Club uh, later today, after we record that, I want to then do the audio for this Kendrick review and then maybe stay up and do the video too and export it and then put it up tomorrow right before we leave. Because I leave like in the afternoon, but I also promised to like go walking with one of my friends before we go. And then I got to go to the store and get it because I'm cooking also for this trip. So I'm like, yo, I got to buy foods and stuff. It's it's a lot of preparation. And I got to see if this karaoke machine works. I haven't plugged it in in like three years. So, you know, it's a lot. So I want it to be out this week. But we'll see. God, God, just pray for me. I don't know. <laughs> Someone pray for him. Pray for him. God? <laughs> yeah. Where you at? Where Yo, you at? Okay. We were talking Leave about you earlier. Come over here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Look, cancer, put it in the back burner. You're used to it. Come help out Emmett. <laughs> <laughs> like they had that in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, you know why they didn't have it? Because people fucking died before they got cancer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, Can't get cancer God. if you're dead at 42. <laughs> to stubbing your toe or some shit. Uh, <laughs> my toe. I'm gone. <laughs> uh, good God. You hit mute on your mic. <laughs> No, seriously, I think. Oh my god! Oh my god! (laughs) I was laughing so hard. I was like, I gotta mute this fucking thing. (laughs) Um, fair enough. Oh shit! That leave. Oh my god, we gotta go. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining us. I remember. Go go cheap.